Good afternoon, Judge Copin. Good afternoon, Chief Justice. And How are afternoon. you? I'm fine. Good, good. Uh, I just wanted to get something out of the way for me right at the outset. Yes. It, it's a nasty question, but uh, a necessary one. We live in South Africa, and uh, this is an issue for us. And it's the issue of your race. You've described yourself as colored in your form, which is what should guide us. But then one of the professional bodies have written in and said you're a white male. And uh, <laughs> so will you just assist? Are you a white male? Well, I don't know what, which white male would be born in uh, Club Town, Soweto, <laughs> and attend school in North Fisher Secondary School. It's also in Soweto, right? Now. But in any event, to put the record straight, I've got nothing against white males. Of course. Whiteness, they can also make a valuable contribution. But yeah, as far as my blackness is concerned, I've always considered myself black. Um, okay, Tarosa, always considered myself that. No. I need not tell you that, that I'm biracial, not myself. Both my parents are biracial. So I share black, African black relatives and supposedly white relatives that I never got to know. But my life was really lived more in black society. Even though I was colored, I mean, if you look at Cliptown, all these places are placed very strategically. Uh, it was for us to share our family, to be close as a family despite the fact that we were categorized as colored and mm -hmm. African black. Uh, but my experience has always been black and I've never had privileges. I'm from a rather poor background um, and I've experienced all the sufferings, poverty, uh, lack of running water, pocket toilets, the long drop systems, Poor schools, I've attended schools. Throughout my schooling career, I was in asbestos classes. Uh, bad education, lack of teachers. And you'll see that I even became a teacher soon after I passed my trick because there were no teachers to serve us. Um, yes. Yeah. So my experience of life has been a rather a very interesting one. And I can relate to all the things that we encounter even up to this day, uh, as far as poverty is concerned, mm -hmm. the need to change. And I was just privileged because I managed through hard work and sheer dint of luck, I think, to make it through all of this uh, and get to university and eventually go straight from university to the bar because I couldn't secure articles because I was either not black enough or not white enough. Mm. And uh, I managed to get to university, which I finished in time. And I knew that I now had to go and make a living at the bar. It wasn't an easy thing, but I was grateful uh, to black practitioners that helped me through my first years. And um, very soon after that, maybe by my fourth, fifth, sixth year, or at the time, I should rather say, at the time when things changed and we started getting state work, my practice changed dramatically. But by then I had built up quite a lot of experience by taking all kinds of work, including criminal work. Whatever came along, I took. And so I had a wide experience of all kinds of work civil work, magistrates, court work, labor work. And, uh, and then I managed to get into state work. I did a lot of work for the government, for the state, mainly in the fields of health and then foreign affairs. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So by the time, and then obviously a lot of work for the NPA, the old NPA with the Scorpions. I was involved in the commissions of inquiry, Campepe Commission, Hereford Commission. 
My first baptism of fire in the Constitutional Court was, of course, one of the biggest cases at the time, the pharmaceutical case, where I appeared in, on my own representing the state president. And uh, yes, so I had a privilege of representing the state in rather very important cases concerning the accessibility of medicines to people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the course of that, I acquired lots of other skills because you'll remember people never wanted to advise the government because they took an opposite view to the government when it came to things like parallel importation and whatever. And I had to learn things like patent law, copyright. I picked up a lot of experience from those cases. Mm -hmm. And as I say, at the height of my career, when I had taken silk and practice for about five years, I decided, purely because I was now keen to know who are going to go to the bench to serve the people as judges. And I often used to look around, and then it occurred to me, what about you? And, and that's the reason why I then offered myself, I said, well, I'll go to the bench. And uh, my family were not very happy with my decision because that meant taking a huge draw in my income. But uh, in any event, I ended up there and I've never regretted it. It took some time getting used to being on the bench, but after about seven years, you realize you're gonna do nothing about the seller, you must adapt or die. But the work was one of the most satisfying things that I have done thus far. Mm -hmm. I am in my 15th year, I've already got my graduate, which means taking into, into account my acting stints, I've done about 15, I'm going now for my 16th year. Um, and I've also then acted in the Labor Appeal Court from about 2012. In 2014, I was active. You started at the Labor Court? No, I never started at the Labor Court. I started in the High Court. No, but in, in your application form, you say you acted as a judge in the Labor oh, Court. Oh, no, I acted there, yes. Mm. And in the Small Claims Court as well. From 1999, I acted in the High Court. Then for consistently after that, I also acted in the Labor Court, alternatively in the High Court. And I was a small claims commissioner before even I started my acting instance yeah. in the courts. Very important work, that. Um, so you, you were at the bar for 25 years. 24, I think. 24. 24 before I went to the bench. And um, if a quarter of that period as silk. No, I think I was a silk for five years. Five years. Before I went to All the right. Bench. Okay. Well, th thanks for that uh, lengthy background. You've actually covered a lot of the ground I would have covered with you anyway. Um, just an interesting uh, feature. I see that you started acting as a judge exactly at this, on the same day I started acting as a judge, but in another division on the southern tip of the country. So you and I shared that in, in common on July 1999. Yeah, myself and Judge uh, Dunstan Mulambo started on the same. Oh, I didn't know. But that. he at that stage was obviously a judge in the Labour Court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you acted at the SCA? Well, uh, the first time I acted there was, I think, 2016, 2017, which was for two terms. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've been acting there since the one December last year, mm -hmm. and up to now, which has been extended. Mm -hmm. So that's how many terms so far, six terms? Let's see, no. Well, I was two terms, I can't, I think that When did you start more. acting on this recent, recent stint, in December? It would be, it would be December, yes. Oh, okay, so that's three terms so far, plus the two, that's, that's yeah. five. Okay. Well, uh, it's 
you, you, you've, you've mentioned a number of the judgments you've, 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 you've written in your, in, in all the codes, the, all these codes you, you've, 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 you've set. Uh, and uh, from your narration, uh, it is clear that you have wide experience in almost all, if not all, the facets of, of, of the law. Is there anything else you want to add to this profile? Well, something to say I'm not perfect, um, but I think I have the necessary skills and experience at this stage in my life. Because remember, I was a judge in the Labour Appeal Court. I was appointed there for 10 years. I completed my 10 years uh, at the end of May of this year. Mm -hmm. um, and the only other place I could actually display and be of assistance with my appellate experience would be in the SCA. Yeah. Right. 10 years you spent at the Labour Appeal Court. That is all. Yeah. All right. No, thank, thank you very much, Judge Copin. I'll hand over to Tipi Zondi to carry on with your interrogation. Thank you. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, uh, um, Chief Justice. Hi, good afternoon, uh, Judge. Good Copin. afternoon, Deputy President. Uh, first of all, I just want to tell you that um, from the comments I received from the colleagues, everybody commented positively about you. So I don't have any negative comments to report to this body. As you are aware that um, the SAS lost a lot of experience through colleagues uh, retiring, some of them appointed to the constitutional court and that has resulted in the SEA suffering incident aspect, such as tax, uh, company law, and IP. Uh, I've just gone through your judgment, and there's no doubt in my mind that we have, you do have sufficient experience in these areas where we have got a skill shortage. How have you found your acting appointment at the SA? How, how, how have we treated you so far? As I say, it's, it's been a very good experience. Um, I've, I've enjoyed it, and uh, it's been a very good experience thus far. Have you had any situation where maybe you had dissented and the, com and the, and the colleague did not take it kindly to you dissenting? No, no, not in this round, no. Okay. Maybe in the previous round. In the previous round? Yes. But this time around, none of them? No. Okay. All right, thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, my neighbor. Good afternoon, Judge Coppin. Afternoon, Judge President. Um, I just, just need to deal with your appellate judge exposure. You are in the Gauteng Division. Um, can you tell us in how many full court appeals have you presided and you scribed? Well, I can't remember how many I presided in. Scribed. I can't also remember, maybe one or two. I can't remember exactly. You can't remember, but is it the number of numerous occasions? On numerous occasions, yes. I see. And uh, any comebacks in terms of those full court judgments being reversed? No, I haven't had any of them reversed, no. Right. And then you say you've been in the LAC for 10 years. And I acted prior to that for about a period of two years. Yeah. Right. So you have unquestionable appellate exposure. That is so. 
appellate court exposure, if I may put it that way. That is so. I, I don't hear the answer. As I say, that is so, but it uh, doesn't mean there's no, no room for new experience. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and in the SCA, you acted for the first two terms, 2016, 2017, and now you've been there for how many terms now? Three terms, four terms? I think it's, I've been there for three terms. Yeah, because... The fourth term will be November. The president has approached me to extend your acting stint, in case you don't know. Um, should I take it that means your value add is seriously recognized in that court? Well, I would assume so. They Thank wanted you. to extend my term there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, JP Mlambo. Commissioner Marumachai. Prof. Manumakai, are you there? Yes, TJ, can you hear me? I, I was saying this, there are no questions from my side. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Any questions for this candidate, Commissioners? Commissioner Trollip? Uh, thank you, Chief Justice. <clears throat> Judge Coppin, I'd like to just follow up on the initial question that the Chief Justice put to you about your racial demographic. Yes. Uh, you told us about your life experience. What languages did you grow up speaking? Uh, and what languages do you use in your judicial practice? Well, my, fa my father's grandfather was chief of the Mumbai tribe. So they spoke a Mumbai language, which is linked to, linked to the northern Sutu languages. Uh, but of course, they then, after losing their land, started speaking Siswati. Uh, my mother, or oh, um, his, his father, is an Englishman. So my father also spoke English. He attended school in a school where the, the medium was Siperi, I think. But he could speak at the end of his life. He spoke about 16 languages. That's my dad. My mother. Uh, also has a Peri mother, so her mother tongue was Peri. Her mother then married uh, a Swazi man after my mother was born. So their language then became Siswati. And when my parents got married, they spoke to each other in Siswati or English. So we were exposed to that. They actually didn't understand the word of Afrikaans. But when we had to move to this place, you see, I speak about North Hussle Senior Secondary School. We had to move there because my granny, uh, my father's mother had to move to Joburg and she could only uh, live in a black area, which was in Deep Kloof. So, I think, uh, so which, which was in Deep Kloof. Um, but the point is, my parents, which was in Deep Club, so we were living in North Hussa. My father didn't see any need for us to go to any schools other than the local schools. The local schools in North Hussa were all Afrikaans medium schools. So that's where I went to my, both my primary and secondary schools were in Afrikaans medium. So as the children in our home, because we all went to this Afrikaans medium school, we spoke to each other, either in English or Afrikaans, but my parents communicated to us either in Siswati or in uh, English. Thank you. Was that your only question, Commissioner Trollip? Yes, thanks, oh, Chief Justice. Thank any so, sorry, Chief Justice, I did ask, um, I said, what languages does the judge use in his judicial work? Mm. Oh, I, I use English. Or, I've never written in Afrikaans, but I mean, I, you know, I understand it. But uh, I've really only used English. Yeah. 
Just one last question from me. Uh, you mentioned a health condition in your questionnaire. I take it it's, it's under control. That is under control, yes. Okay. No, thank you very much. I, I don't see any further hands. Oh, we have one from the minister. Thank you good and good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mom. I just wanted to know out of interest, I see in 18.4 as part of your experience and knowledge as a practitioner on the questionnaire. You have also, you know, uh, lectured in, at SIJ, our college, our yes. institute. What do you think we could, um, you know, bring into action that could assist in the training of uh, aspirant judges in a better way than we are doing now? Any views, any thoughts? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer, really. As I say, I mean, I, I was invited the, the first round, I think, by Judge Matopo and the second one by Judge uh, Mochapelo. And I mean, I, I think they handled it as best as they could. I was just asked to present on a particular topic. Um, as I say, I'm not, I'm not sure of any shortfalls in the education. Um, and yeah. What I encountered there was that the best was being done in the circumstances. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Commissioner Moimang. Thank you, uh, uh, Chief Justice. Uh, good afternoon, Judge Copen. Good afternoon, Commissioner. The side. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Justice Copen, uh, just uh, on the on the uh, your pronouncement on two cases, uh, the the Mohale Alwais versus oh. Muko Crow. Yes, uh, I see that uh, the, uh, Professor Barnhorst. Uh, expresses uh, a good news on your on your grasp on the on the on the on, on, on the mining law uh, particularly on on your interpretation of section 112 of the minerals and petroleum resource act uh, would you mind just to share with us uh, because uh, they say uh, they praise you for 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 for, for, for good law as far as it was held that the ministerial consent is required if controlling interest is in a company moves away. You can just share with us the, the, the reason behind that. Thank you. Sorry, I'm, I'm not understanding the question. If you say share, do you want me to discuss the judgment? Yeah, your, your, your appreciation of section 11.2 of the Minerals Act. Oh, okay. Thank you. No, it's to do with control that the moment there's a control in a company such as that, that you would have ministerial consent being required. And the whole purpose of the ministerial consent, I assume, was to vet the candidates, because obviously it's got to do with a wider objective, the BEE objective. So once the ownership within a company changes, or the control of a company changes, that's what I found, um, then the minister must be involved in the process and the minister would have to consent to that. That's really the nutshell of it. So that you'd have people, for example, that will establish a company, get the necessary approval to establish it, and in the meantime, the whole inside of the company changes. Controls change. So people could bypass the PE, the PE objectives by doing something like that. Thank you, Justice Coppin. Thank you, CJ. Commissioner Trollip, did you have a follow-up question? Yes, please, uh, Chief Justice. Um, Judge Kuhn, um, did you uh, dismiss... Uh, Judge Coppin. I'm just... Sorry, Coppin. Yeah. Sorry, 
Uh, did you dismiss um, Vodacom employee in Kosan Makate's uh, case against Vodacom? Yes. With yes. Could you tell us what your thoughts are on the latest developments? I don't know whether it's a problem. I mean, this mm. thing is in the news. As I, I was asked about this. Sorry, before you, you answer the question, uh, Judge Copin, are you asking for the latest developments with the case? I say that case is before the courts right no, now. No, I'm asking the, 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 the oh, commissioner. Oh, yes. Are you asking him to comment on the current status of the Makate? No, yes. no, not necessarily, Chief Justice. I'm interested. Just in, repeat the question. I'm interested that the judge had dismissed his original claim, and now there's a matter before the courts where the claim is significant. And I asked him if he wanted to share any thoughts on that. Mm, I'm very uncomfortable with with that question. This that case is pending before the constitutional court as we speak, I and uh, he may who, who knows what, where he might stray in trying to answer your question. Mm. Judge Copin, thank you very much for making yourself available for the interview. Thank you. Unless there's anything you want to ask us or raise with us, you're excused. No, thank you very much. Thank you.